Yes, what's happening people? It's your boy Jeremy Bourne here, back again on the Punch Perfect Boxing channel. Uh, before I get started, I just want to say thank you for 700 subscribers. We managed to reach that milestone before the end of the week, so I'm absolutely buzzing. As always, the uh, the journey really is to 1,000, so keep uh, keep on pushing, guys. Make sure to like and comment on every episode if you've got any friends that are into their boxing. Or if you know I ever make a video about a fight that you know someone else would be interested in, then just share it around and uh, we'll try and get as many people involved as we can on the channel. So I wanted to make a video today. I'm trying to do a video every other day at the minute. Um, and obviously the uh, I promised the video on the Terence Crawford, Sean Porter purse bids. Um, but obviously that's now been pushed back, unfortunately. Um, I think that's not next week, it's the following week. Um, so we've got a little bit of time before that. And I was thinking about videos to make. And there's obviously been some headlines, the, the Sky News and things like that. I'm sure some people would like to hear my thoughts on that. Uh, just briefly covering it, because that's not the aim of the video today. But I was just going to say that... Um, I think it's good that someone's kind of putting the pressure on Hearn a little bit and um, the standard of a lot of his shows and especially his US schedule as well isn't really up to scratch and now that they've got top rank involved in that who have a good series of fights coming up um, I think that piles on the pressure a little bit there they've still got a way to go in terms of UK talent because Huey Fury headlining cards and you know Chris Eubank fighting nobodies and headlining cards isn't going to be the thing that you know turns the tide here in the UK but I think it's a good start getting the likes of Josh Taylor involved um, I think if they can pick up some of the uh, the Olympians as well I think will be a big a big stretch um, I think the other thing as well if they keep Joshua on pay-per-view and if they can get that Marshall versus Shields fight done as well something Hearn failed to do I think that can be a good thing the only thing that disappoints me a little bit is um a lot of people talk about, you know, belts are the reason that a lot of these big fights don't happen. But the main reason big fights don't happen in boxing is because of different promoters and their egos and different broadcasters and, and the difficulties of choosing which one a fight between different promotional outfits and broadcasters lands on. So, you know, having another broadcaster in the UK, obviously Sky were already existing, but now having them as an actual player without her on their, um, on their side, you know, it might mean that we're, we're potentially we don't see some fights that we do want to see, but you know, hopefully with the existing relationship there, that they're they're more willing to work together than um, than you know he is with Frank. Um, so yeah, I think it'll be it'll be interesting. Um, but I didn't want to cover that in too much detail today. I think on the podcast this weekend, where I've got a special guest coming on, we'll discuss it in a little bit more detail. The thing I wanted to talk about today was actually Josh Warren versus Mauricio Lara. So spoke about on the podcast with Charlie this week and again we sort of give our reasoning for why we think we, that that person's going to win and um, talk about some of the factors heading into the fight and we just preview things generally but we don't necessarily look directly into the rematch and I've seen so much in the in the recent months and I was you know I've been on this side of the fence for quite a while as well that I just don't see how Josh Warren gets his revenge in this fight with everything that happened in the first fight um but, you know, I've watched back the first fight and I've started to give it a little bit more thought and I'm sort of more 60-40 towards Warrington now. Um, and I'll get into why. But I do think that, you know, this this notion that Wara, uh, Lara completely dominated him, completely, you know, destroyed him. The fight went nine rounds and at the point that Josh Warrington was concussed was from round four onwards. He showed an, an elite chin and serious conditioning to just get through those next few rounds and to be competitive in those rounds as well. He wasn't just bashed from pillar to post. Um, his legs slowed right up, his hand slowed right up because of being concussed. Um, but, you know, he was still in there. And I think, you know, sometimes we look at that and take it as a negative. I think it should be taken as a positive. Um, and I think there's some things that Josh Warren can correct this weekend to ultimately win this fight. But he has to be near on perfect to win this fight. And it's harder to be, you know... 80% and get the win like a Lara when you've got that type of power and you know you only need you know around four and around nine to make the difference versus you know Josh Warren who's going to need to be perfect for all 12 rounds so again I can see why people are siding with Lara I think in the entire build up to this fight I was siding with Lara as well but like I say that's just shifted for me just slightly recently from watching that their first fight re-watching some old Josh Warren fights and having a look to see what he can do so my observations last night when I watched the Josh Warrington fight, again, I don't want to harp on about this, but when they did go into their first meeting, I said that it was banana skin potential. Um, he'd been out the ring for a, a long time, and his type of style is one where that really shows because it's very, you know, he's very active um, in terms of his punch output and things like that. Um, 
there was no crowd. Um, he already had one eye on the on the Kanzu fight, which I think was ultimately the biggest thing in all of it. I think he he let the kind of drop the ball a little bit in terms of his focus and his motivation. Um, but I didn't think he'd lose. No one thought he was going to lose. Um, and uh, to be honest, it was just a, a fantastic win for Mauricio Lara, who did everything he need, needed to do and more um, and was fantastic in that fight. Um, and, you know, I'm not taking anything away from him when I sort of talk about the things Josh Warren did wrong because Lara did everything right. Um, I watched the first few rounds before the round four and Josh Warren, it was such a naive performance and ignorant attitude attitude from Josh Warren on fight night he rocked up in this full belief that he was just going to walk through Mauricio Lara and that if he gets rid of him nice and easy he can roll straight into a Kanzu fight and he's got that pay-per-view headline that really cements him as the number one in the division but instead he was ignorant and I've said this uh, in a video that I've done with G-Man Boxing where he became a victim of his own success especially in terms of his power He's, he's managed to hurt people over the last couple of years. Carl Frampton's come out and said that Warren hit him harder than anyone else. Um, you know, he's got a few stoppages under his belt as well. But he's not a power puncher. He's, he's hurt people that didn't deem him as power punchers. But anyone that hasn't, you know, anyone that's sort of respected his power and, you know, his activity and stuff hasn't been hurt by him because they're expecting, you know, they're expecting that punch output and that level of power. Whereas, you know, the you know, Frampton, for example, that went in there and didn't expect a puncher, you know, he was quite shocked when he did get hit by him. But Mauricio Lara has no, you know, doesn't care for Josh's power and wasn't expecting, you know, that he was going to be feather fisted by any means. So when the power landed, Lara sort of thought, yeah, that's all right. I can deal with that. You know, he's been in Mexicans traditionally spar with people that are much bigger than them. So he's been hit harder by bigger people throughout his career. Um so, um, you know, Josh Warren put too much faith in his power and it didn't pay off. The other thing he put too much faith in was his chin. Again, that's a little bit different for me because he's always displayed a good chin. The power thing, I think he should never have got that much confidence in his power because his record proves that he isn't a power puncher. Um, but his chin, he's always shown a good chin. I've never seen Josh Warren hurt. His conditioning is twofold to that as well because even if he does get dazed for a second, he recovers very quickly. Um, so I think those two things, and again, like I said with the ignorance and stuff, I just think it was a really naive and stupid attitude from Josh Warren that cost him in that fight. Early on, though, he was beating Lara to the punch. He was getting his combinations off quicker. He was sort of getting to him before Lara got to him. But the problem was it was 10s and 15s and 20 punch sequences and combinations because he just thought he could walk through him. Whereas this weekend... I do feel that if he can limit those to fours, fives, get out, uh, Darren Barker and Chris Lloyd sort of referenced it on their show today. If he restricts those punch sequences and focuses more on movement, I think he can trouble Lara a lot more, who does sort of, you know, for as good as, uh, as underrated as we now sort of felt he was heading into that first fight. You know, there were instances where Josh Warren did look a little bit of a step ahead in the early early stages. Once his legs went when he was concussed, that just completely changed everything. But the trouble came for him when he was looking to just trade off with him and got caught by a heavy-handed slugger. I've said this many times, if you're a pressure fighter, the worst possible style you can face is a heavy-handed slugger. Go and ask Roman Gonzalez, who's an all-time great but just couldn't get past Rung Versailles. Um, because it's just an awful style to deal with because you're literally trading off with someone that hits harder than you and sort of can dig a little bit more than you and it's just the wrong style for someone like Josh Warrington. So Lara, you know, enjoyed all his success and, you know, when La Warrington was coming on to him and attacking him, Lara's going, yep, yeah, come on, bring it because I'm going to launch my own and I'm going to catch you and his power is going to tell a lot more than Josh Warrington's is and it did on the night. I think the difference is this time is if Josh Warrington, I think he can still beat him to the punch. But once you beat him, don't get greedy. Threes and fours and you're off. And I know a lot of people say he's not going to be able to do that with the crowd. I have that worry as well. But I watched the Lee Selby fight back. And by the way, not comparing Lee Selby to Mauricio Lara anyway, because stylistically they're completely different. Um, Lee Selby's predominantly off the back foot. Um, Mauricio Lara likes to lead. He's obviously more aggressive in his approach as well. Selby's much more of a stick and move type boxer. Um, but the one thing that went very underrated about that performance from Josh Warren, and I remember on the night tweeting about it and loads of people tweeting about it, we expected it to be the, the boxer versus the brawler. 
And once Warrington got onto Selby early, he sort of realised that he didn't need to go at 100 miles per hour for the whole fight. And he sort of sat back and started to pick his shots a little bit more and outbox Selby at times, you know. And everyone was surprised at just how well Josh Warren outboxed Selby. And I remember going into the Frampton fight, a lot of people said, don't underestimate Warrington's ability to box with Frampton. He's not necessarily going to walk through him. Um, and I think that's a point to, you know, to be made. You know, this notion that Josh Warrington can't put forward that type of performance. Yes, it's against a different type of fighter. But, you know, he boxed like that against Selby and showed, even with the crowd roaring him on to his first world championship, that he can show that type of restraint. And I think surely there's got to be a part of him that knows that getting the job done at all costs is the, is the main thing in this fight or his career is potentially over. And that's the one thing we made a comparison, me and Charlie, with the AJ Ruiz rematch. Some people said it's not a good comparison. The comparison I was making was... Joshua had to go into that Ruiz rematch with a safety first approach and just get the job done. You know, screw everything else. Josh Warren absolutely has to have that mindset as well. Get the job done at all costs, but be safe above all costs as well. Um, and I think, you know, he can do that this weekend. Um, I think it's still an incredibly dangerous fight. And if he makes the same mistakes as he did in the first fight, if he wants to get dragged into a war... If he wants to throw 10 to 15 punch combinations rather than restricting those to fours and fives, then, you know, he can eat that, you know, he can eat that defeat again and his career can be in the gutter because that's his own problem and he hasn't learned from his mistakes like he's tried to acknowledge throughout the build-up. But if he can do those things, I do think he can win, but it's going to take a near-perfect performance. I think if he just, you know, like I said, restricts those, restricts, restricts those combinations and limits the exchanges, Boxes and moves. The one thing with Lara is a little bit rigid with his attacks. He's not so much, uh, you know, some Mexicans that have great footwork and are able to sort of change the angle and sort of, you know, attack from different spots. He does come forward in quite a sort of monotonous approach and it's, you know, it's quite predictable if you're not concussed. Um, I think he can read that a little bit better, Josh Warren, and if he can sort of be bouncy, you know, make sure that he's sort of, you know, not always going in the same direction because the left hook is the danger punch. If he's not always sort of circling to the right because he's going to get caught with that eventually, he needs to switch it up and, you know, sort of try and move to the left when he can as well. So I think the notion that he's just, you know, there's no way Josh Warren can win this isn't true. There is definitely a way he can win this because the, the fundamental reason he lost the first fight was because he traded off and got greedy against a heavy-handed slugger. Can he not do that this time? Absolutely. And that was the main factor in the first fight. So I think that that needs to be, be the thing he ultimately changes. Um, and I think, you know, I'm starting to lean more towards Josh Warrington now. Um, I'm not ruling out a Mauricio Lara win, by the way. I'll happily accept it if it does go that way, because I do see a way that that does happen. Again, I said I'm 60-40, 55-45. You know, it's not a wide margin for me at all. I actually think that probably my gut tells me that Lara is going to win. Um, maybe even earlier than last time, but I think my head tells me that um, Josh Warrington can box sensibly enough. And I think the reason my head's telling me is because I can map out a path. Obviously, I can't, I can't execute it for Josh Warrington. Um, I, f I can work out a path in which I feel Josh Warrington can correct mistakes from last time and win this fight. If he's smart enough and acknowledge those things, and I'm sure he has, because he says he has, you know, the proof will be in the pudding on Saturday. He just needs to show now that he can box to that game plan. And when your career's on the line, you box very differently um, compared to, you know, the Josh Warren that went in there in February and just expected to roll it, roll him over. Um, and like I say, a naive, stupid performance. Even the fight week, you know, not even... I'm not making excuses for him at all. Um, and by the way, in all of this, I'm not particularly a Josh Warren fan by any means either. Um, I don't want to see him stretched out by any means, but I'm not exactly, you know, a big fan of him either. Um, I actually, I'm a big Mexican boxing fan, so probably Lara is my, my favourite in this fight. Um, but, you know, I was I was a, a, a Lee Selby fan around the time that he thought, fought him. Um, I've interviewed Lee Selby many times over the years, and he'd sort of shown his support for the websites and stuff I've been writing for, interviewed him and everything. Um and Warrington just just had a swagger about him, like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to walk through you. I remember the, the Carl Frampton fight. I was there. I was actually sat in the bit that was Irish, mainly Irish. And across from me was the Leeds fans. 
and you could just tell that they sort of turned up to, to Manchester and made it their city that night um, and they just took over and, you know, cut, they he never allowed Frampton to get going and he shut everyone up there and he had the confidence of a champion even going into the Galahad fight which some people felt he didn't win he still had that air of confidence um, and I just think that, you know, maybe lost that a little bit now and it's now about, you know, swallowing your pride and realising that sometimes it's just about winning and I think this time he'll have enough to just get the win but you know a confident Mauricio Lara that knows he can now win this fight is also extremely dangerous so not ruling out any possibilities in this fight um, I think it will be a, you know a really exciting fight as well I think their styles gel for that but if it's not exciting I think it needs to be because Josh Warren has sort of killed it a little bit um, because otherwise yeah an exciting you know exciting brawl where they trade off in the center of the ring is only going to win one way unfortunately for Josh Warren that's going to be Mauricio Lara repeating his victory over him so I think he needs to uh I think he needs to control this performance on Saturday night and get the job done comment down below guys your thoughts um I'll interact with all of you of course I want to hear your predictions and stuff and you know if you feel Lara wipes him out again say why you think he wipes him out again don't just don't just say you know he he wiped him out last time because you know the rounds four and nine apart from out apart from that you know there were seven other rounds that you can actually look at and sort of break down and things like that you know what is different this time round, and what do you feel happens um, and let me know down in the comments don't be rude with any of your comments or anything like that i see one on the other video the other day you just get deleted if you're outright rude but if you want to make a fair point i'm always happy to to comment on that but yeah make sure to like comment guys make sure to subscribe as well as we uh near 1000 and uh enjoy your weekends and i'll catch you later